from the ancient Nami comes an incredible life story. Seen through the eyes of one desert lion, he and his brothers destined to become kings. Their every step followed by one man. While their mothers raised precious new life, the five became nomads in search of their own kingdom. They thrived as hunters and became the youngest pride males ever known in the desert. With a future full of promise. Until lives were fractured by hardship and loss. This is the true story of the most remarkable desert coalition that has ever existed. In the southwest of Africa, where the Atlantic Ocean meets the Nami Desert, there is a place known as the Skeleton Coast. Only a few miles further inland, just beyond the dunes, a desert-adapted male lion sleeps. This is Tulamor. He is waking up in a place that is unfamiliar to him. He's never been here before and has no idea how he ended up in this alien landscape so far away from home. It is barren, empty, and lonely here. Even the scent of the terrain is strange. Not used to being all alone, instinct compels him to return to his brothers. Together, they have a kingdom with lionesses on the far side of the desert. He needs to get his bearings. Dependent on his brothers, he embarks on a journey of a lifetime. One that will change his future forever. A journey that takes us back to the very beginning. Four years ago, Tulamo was born in the Huani Valley, forming part of a unique cohort of five male cubs. They were raised by their three mothers at a time when few adult male lions remained in the desert. So young Tulamo's survival and that of his four brothers was crucial to the small population. Following their every step, scientist Dr. Philip Stander dedicated himself to the elusive desert adapted lions. By collaring the five young males, he had the opportunity to follow them throughout their lives. Two decades of research could not have prepared him for what was to come. Philip documented the lion's every movement. Toulamor was one of them. He and his brothers became known as the Five Musketeers and all survived to adolescence, forming an inseparable brotherhood. Now, at the age of four, Tulamore has grown into an adult male about to reach his prime. He 
has been walking for several days now. The surroundings are still unfamiliar, but remarkably, he seems to understand in which direction to go. A homing instinct from deep within, leading him north, through habitats where the most elusive of desert animals occur. But while he is all on his own, he will need to adapt to survive without the help of his brothers. A hunting opportunity. Prey is scarce in the desert. He is not used to hunting on his own. Normally, he could rely on the other musketeers, but today, he's got an unlikely wingman. <laughs> the springbok is spooked by the Rupal's Koran birds. A small antelope, but by no means easy to catch. He'd learned this at a young age, when he eagerly joined his mother on a hunt. He shadowed her every step. She patiently waited. But Tulimor had everything under control. <laughs> Except for the springbok. If only he had worked together. His mother, not impressed. But before long, Tulemore and his brothers found out that by working as a team, they were stronger and more effective. A single lion would never take on this deceptively ferocious creature, a small but feisty honey badger. But the power of five brought victory. And Tulemore walked away with the prize. This success brought confidence and ambition, leading the way to their first oryx kill. With Tulemore at its throat, his mother stood back. But unsure of his grip, she stepped in one last time. Soon, they'd have to do it all by themselves. The mothers had looked after their sons much longer than was usual in the desert. But as the musketeers grew into rowdy adolescents, the pride's dynamics changed. They had been a close family, but the lionesses became increasingly intolerant of their sons. Normal aggression at kills, heightened by five growing males. A grown-up son isn't meant to stay with his mother. She had to rear a new generation of cubs. And despite the deep affection Tulemore had for her, their separation was imminent. It was time for him and his brothers to continue life as a coalition. With an additional year of life experience gained from their mothers, they went off on their own, leaving the protection of the Wanib for good. Tulemore and his brothers grew into five formidable nomads, covering vast distances 
in search of their own kingdom. Five musketeers, all for one, and one for all. Philip expected their next phase to be challenging. Being nomadic is the hardest part of a male lion's life, even more so when you're part of a large coalition. A tiny kill put their brotherhood to the test. nomads in unknown terrain and with a scarcity of prey, competition became ever more fierce. Could their coalition sustain itself? Would they stay together or be forced to part ways? Philip was about to find out. The coalition's unique size turned out to be far from a disadvantage. The key? Work as a team. Sulemore often took the initiative. He had become a stealthy hunter, eager and committed. But by targeting the largest of desert prey, Tulemore's enthusiasm outran his chance of success. He was ever hopeful even though he stood little chance on his own. Taking down Giraffe would require the help of his brothers. It was cooperation that would bring them success. And success gave them confidence. This was a turning point in their lives. Through the seasons, the musketeers became expert giraffe hunters. In the desert, rain is as rare as a large coalition. Normally dependent on their kills for hydration, this unexpected rainfall is a rare opportunity to quench their thirst. Their tawny coats forming blankets of moisture. Giraffe is the only desert prey that can sustain the five grown males. As well as a few brave others. An adult bull provides more than a ton of meat. A feast that will last for three days. But leaving a kill unguarded is risky. Soon more hungry mouths appear. Uh, 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 
but there is a limit to how much the scavengers are allowed to steal. Another scavenger keeps a safe distance, the elusive brown hyena, one of Philip's other study animals. With an acute sense of smell for carrion, it's a remarkable desert carnivore. But to the jackal, it's merely a rival. For a large coalition, life couldn't get much better than this. And without five large mouths to feed, life back in the Wani Valley is also much easier for their mothers. But they're no longer on their own. After a gap of nearly four years, Tulamore's mother has finally given birth to her second litter. Four cubs. And unlike the five musketeers, this time, all of them are female. Their father was a nomad, long since gone. The lionesses know how to raise their cubs without the protection of a pride male. It's what they did with the musketeers. As females, the little sisters will stay with their mother all their lives. Together, they'll form the core of the pride. But while the female cubs will always remain in the safety of the Wani Valley, as males, the musketeers had to leave to find their own kingdom. A kingdom with lionesses. And on the far edge of the desert, they stumble on it much sooner than expected. With so few adult male lions around, Several prides have been waiting for one to arrive. When five musketeers come along together, they have their work cut out for them. The scent she's left behind is a clear message for the males. She is ready to mate. It's all that's needed to draw them in. The males, still inexperienced, seem uncertain. With the lioness confidently taking the initiative, the young male's instincts take over. The first attempt reveals their immaturity. The musketeers are young, but as a large coalition, they can provide good protection. After an unusually long adolescence, their short nomadic life comes to an abrupt end. There is no rivalry between the brothers. They each have their turn, again and again. Worn out and exhausted, 
Tulemorna's brothers settle as young pride males. And yet their future is more uncertain than ever. Just over the mountains, on the border of their new kingdom, danger looms. People with livestock. Easy prey, but loaded guns and poison. These local farmers establish cattle posts to protect their animals at night. But cattle left behind in the wilds of the valley are fair game to a predator. The musketeers couldn't resist such easy prey. But the milk of human kindness is in short supply when livelihoods are threatened. The musketeers cannot understand the risk of being so close to rural communities. Killing cattle could come at a high price. Philip is concerned for their safety. So night after night, for months on end, he monitors their whereabouts. He lights fires and does whatever he can to keep the musketeers away from the cattle posts. Rare desert male lions are worth protecting, but so are people's livelihoods. Philip stands between them, torn between his role as a scientist and his devotion to the lions. But the fuse has been lit. Back in the Wanit Valley, Tulemore's mother and her daughters aren't in danger. This place is too arid for livestock. Although one of the cubs hasn't made it through the first few months, the remaining three sisters are thriving and have become close. Their mother is looking for her own sister. The bond between little sisters is as strong as that between big ones. spends little time with them, for she has no young of her own. Lacking any maternal instinct, she is intolerant of her sister's offspring. But in time, this might change. The cubs, with their mother and aunt, will become part of the pride, protected by the isolation of the Wanib. But on the other side of the desert, disaster has struck. Injured, shot, and broken. Philip picks up a disturbing signal of a collar, no longer moving. 
The farmers have taken revenge for their lost cattle. Tulamore seems unharmed. But three of his brothers are injured. And one of the musketeers has been killed. Bullet wounds, evidence of the trauma of the previous night. They've paid the price. Roaming male lions often fall victim to this conflict. They do not recognize human borders. Traumatized, confused, and incomplete. The five musketeers are no more. They have come to understand the danger of the villagers, but unable to comprehend that their brother will never join them again. They will return to search for him. On the safe side of their kingdom, the musketeers have rejoined their lionesses. When the females start to move off, Tulamore follows. As one of the pride males, he's dutifully playing his role. His interest in the females is becoming stronger. But he's the only one. This time, his brothers don't join him. While they head back to the area where they lost their brother, Tulamore makes a decision that will change his life forever. The three males move into the mountains, closer to another cattle post where Philip can't reach them. Day in. Day out, Philip monitored their movements until they moved no more. The satellite coordinates of the males have remained in the same place. Philip realizes that he has lost another three musketeers. There was nothing more he could have done. Three more desert kings have vanished. A few days later, Tulamore calls for his brothers, eager to reunite, unaware that they have been poisoned by the farmers. To save the last remaining musketeer, Philip has no choice but to immobilize and relocate to Le Mans. 
Although moving a lion is not an easy decision. <laughs> To protect the musketeers, Philip finally returns to the Wanib. He finds the three cubs on their own. They look hungry and lost. At almost a year old, the three sisters are still dependent on their mother, but she hasn't returned from hunting. Concerned, Philip decides to look for her. Eventually, he picks up the disturbing signal that has become all too familiar to him. The double sound indicates that the collar of the mother is no longer moving. All he finds is her collar. and some of her remains. The desert and scavengers have erased most of the evidence. For a man so devoted, these are trying times. Now, the cubs' only hope for survival is their aunt. But would she take them in? She seems to be looking for their mother, her sister, unaware that she's died. She moves back and forth ever searching, and becomes a lone huntress. Hunting alone has its challenges. But she's experienced and determined.
each step placed with precision. Every muscle wired and ready. The risk to the hunter is very real. Letting go could be lethal. Her prey's desperate defense shrugged off in an intimate embrace, shrouded in sand and dust. But her triumph doesn't go unnoticed. Her kill regarded with hungry eyes. Her sister's cubs. But will they be allowed to feed? Dulamore has been home for several days. His calls still unanswered. Then, a familiar figure on the horizon. She seems excited to see him, one of the lionesses from his pride. Her company will distract him from his search for his brothers. Tulamore is now the only pride male with an important job to fulfill. Back in his kingdom, he claims the throne. After so much tragedy, it is time for a new beginning.
For the orphan cubs, the new beginning is tough. Their aunt is not willing to share her hard-earned meal. But with hunger comes bravery. With no cubs of her own, she still has no maternal feelings for her sister's young. Though the cubs form part of her family, she remains hostile towards them. But the cubs are persistent and desperate. Without her tolerance, the cubs stand little chance. Hunger and determination keep them coming back. Driven by their need to survive, they will have to leave their youth behind. A final moment of bravery. At last, the family bond prevails, and finally she allows the cubs to feed. It's all they need to make it through, until the next kill. If they can depend 